My name is Sharon Quinn and I'm also known as the original Runway Diva and you are watching Model Behavior. Class is officially in session. Today my guest lecturer is Newark-born, Jersey City-based fashion designer and author Douglas Says. Now he was one of our first guests on Model Behavior and now he's back. He has written his third book called Always a Dime, the official memoirs of Douglas Says. Welcome back to Model Behavior, Douglas Thank Says. you so much for having me, You're Sharon. You're welcome. Um, so, you know, you were in one of our early shows, so I don't have to yes. explain to you how this goes. You already know. Yes. So, um, I know we covered this probably that first segment, but just very briefly let everybody know how long you've been doing this, when you got started, and how... Everything got started. Right. Well, I started in high school. Mm -hmm. um, so that was like 79, 1979. Uh, I think that for me, fashion was like in my system because I had a cousin, my older cousin was a drag queen and an illustrator, hair, makeup, did everything. And, and I was patterning myself after my cousin. You know, I wanted to be like my cousin. I didn't know what my cousin was, but I wanted to be like my cousin. And um, I think that's where, like, my curiosity for fashion started. Now, you said you wanted to be like your cousin. You wanted to yeah. be in drag, or you wanted... Well, you know, well, I, actually, yes, I did want, like, you know, because I'm a kid at this point. Okay. This is before 79, you know, this is like the 60s, and I'm just <laughs> looking at my cousin. And, you know, it's so funny because I talked to one of my older cousins. Like, I only have, like, two older, three older cousins left, right? Mm -hmm. And I talked to one of them, and he's estranged. Like, he doesn't really, you know, he's not a part of the family. And I spoke to him recently, and, um, and we both were talking about my cousin, Leji, that was my cousin's name, and he was saying how he could, he was he was surprised at um, my success, and he thought that my cousin was really really talented, but never did anything with you know his talent. I said, well, it was a different time, you know, it was a different time period, and um, he said, but everybody liked Leji. He said even my friends liked him, and you know he's straight, so you know all his friends liked him. But you know, so looking at that, like I said, you know, I'm looking at you know somebody who who has magnetism and personality and talent and yeah I wanted to be just like my cousin. And you just threw out two two really interesting words. Mm -hmm. You threw out success mm -hmm. and talent. Mm -hmm. That's a cute little segue. I appreciate that <laughs> because because you've been on the show before. Yes. You uh you decided you were gonna write up some little questions <laughs> for me to ask you. And I normally don't allow people to do that, but your questions are they're kinda cool, so I'm gonna ask. Well thank and you. And you, you, one of the questions you asked me to ask you is, <laughs> is there a recipe for success? Do you think the talent garnishes success, and is there a recipe for that? Um, no, there is not a recipe for success. I don't think so. I think that um, we get caught up in the trappings of trying to be and do what everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. I think uh, what works best for you is what's going to work best for you. You have to stay focused and, and be true to who you are and what's inside of you. And that's what I have done for myself, you know. Other people look at me and they think, oh, well, you should do this and you should do that. And why aren't you doing this? And why aren't you doing Project Runway? Why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you do You know, the, uh, lots of people have done those avenues and they're no more or less successful than they were when they started. Um, I still, I, I consider myself successful. Yeah, I do. And what is success to you? Well, um, hmm. success could be be judged by the fact that I've been living in the same place, which is not a bad thing, living in the same place since uh, 95, so for like 23, 24 years mm -hmm. now. Um, lights always on, rent's paid, you know. Um, and you're doing something that you like And I'm, to I'm do? doing exactly what I love to do. There, there is no boss, there is no sponsor, there is no dictator, you know, I'm doing exactly what I love to do, and, and that is successful to me. Now you 
Now you do you had a studio for a while, a showroom yes. for you had it for a couple a few years. For yeah, for several years. Uh, I I had it from 1997 to 2009. And that's right along recession time. Things exactly. Really, yeah. Really once, bad. once in 2009, everything changed. I saw everything really change, and I'm like, okay, do you want to keep this up or do you want to go home? So I just, you know, worked from my apartment. I work from my apartment now. Now, would 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 you think um, of possibly doing the showroom route again, or only if only if. Um, if everything fell in the right place, you know, if, if if money situation fell in the right place, then I would do it. But and are there benefits to having a, a showroom as opposed to how you're doing it now? It is because I like the separation. You know, I remember the separation. You know, the separation being, you know, your home is your home, mm -hmm. and your studio is your studio. So your studio can you I can leave the fabric on the floor, and you know, at when I close the door, you know, but at home I have to clean all it up and move that out the way so that I can now have a living room. So, yeah, it, that's the difference. Now, you, you, this is an interesting one. You write, anybody can get a license, mm. but are you going to just let anybody drive the car? What does that mean? So that's, that's kind of like an analogy for me. Like, okay, anybody can get a license, right? All you have to do is put the work in, yeah? Mm -hmm. But are you going to just let anybody drive you? You know, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm going to drive myself. You know, so, so basically people tell me, oh, oh, you should do this and you should do that and you should do this. You should. But they're not doing it themselves. You know, they're, you know, I, I, I and it, it wears me out, you yeah. know, all of the, all of the shouldas and couldas and wouldas, you know, but, um, but nobody is exactly giving you a, a helping hand, mm -hmm. you know, um, when I do my show, I wear every hat, you know, producing, uh, producing backstage, front house, everything. I'm making the clothes, booking the models. I do everything but do the and makeup. And you come up with your own concept? I come, everything is me. Everything is me up until the day of the show. The day of the show, that's when my friends, Linwood and Dwayne, come and they, you know, they work the back, the back room. But before that, you know, the program is me, the everything, you know, the look board, the individual boards, everything is me on my own, um, which which is you know it's okay because I don't know that I trust anybody to do the work myself yeah, anyway. Yeah, I get you that. know because you know sometimes they'll they'll start but they won't they won't see it through. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you'll wind up having to go back through and do it again anyway. So, um, see, I had a question and now it just left my head. <laughs> All right, so. Now, in your bio, bio, you are you specialize in uh, stretch fabrics, mm -hmm. and you've gotten that little title, the King of Cling. Yes. Do you still only work in slinky, or? Uh, well, well, not. Wait a minute. Some of the stuff I've seen hasn't been slinky. Well, you know, I'm, I'm. Well, I've ventured out. You know, I'm doing menswear. You know, um, I'm, I'm, you know, I do plus, but it's custom, you know, it's uh, custom order. And uh, and I'm starting, so the menswear is not jersey, of course. You right. know, I'm, I'm working from linen and, you know, wool and, you know, different things. But I do throw, you know, a little stretch in there, too. Most of the fabrics have stretch in them. Even if it's a denim, it has a little stretch in it. Um, the dress pants usually have a little stretch in it because it's, it's a lot more comfortable. Because I, I'm really making the clothes for me. You know, I, I'm my muse, you know, when I'm making those things. Uh -huh. um, but luckily, other guys have been, you know, buying it, and they like they like the menswear, so that's really cool. Now, you have, uh, Sabrina says you have compar compared the plus-size market to the film industry. Mm-hmm. Okay, so. Wow, that's my bio. That's from my bio. Yeah. I, I have to remember you gonna know, you, got, you know you got to explain that, Ricky, right? How do they compare? <laughs> Who's Ricky? Lucy and Ricky. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just really trying to act like Douglas didn't ask me who's Ricky. Well, I didn't Graduate know that was going to be your reference. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, okay. Um, what, what happens in what I'm saying there mm -hmm. is the fact that, like with film, we always 
we as, as black people, you know, we're always looking at the director who produced something, and we're like, well, you know, they, that's not how it's done. Like, um, okay, what's the guy, uh, the guy who used to do, um, I'm not going to remember that show that used to come on. Um, but anyway, it was it, Noah's Ark. Mm -hmm. Yes, you are gonna. Rem yes, you are gonna remember. <laughs> um, <laughs> so like Noah's Ark, right? Mm -hmm. And everybody was like, "Oh, that's not that's not gay people. That's not how they act. That's gay people and like that. That's L.A. That's not New York." You know, when more people start to tell their stories, then we'll have we'll have a variety out there. But right now, this is what's happening, and you have to embrace what's happening. You know, mm -hmm. so and the same thing with plus with the plus market. When more designers are starting to tell the story and do a plus line, then you'll have a variation and you'll have difference differences out there as opposed to uh, putting all the weight on one designer. Oh, you should do this and you should do that. Why you do this? Why you do that? I'm, I'm doing my vision. This what what I'm producing is what's in here and in here. You know. Do you have a? Okay, because I know that you you had to be dragged kicking and screaming into the plus market. <laughs> I remember this. Yes, 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 um, yes. But do you do you find um, plus plus models that inspire you to design for them? I know that's few and far between, <laughs> but there has to be at least one well, or two. Well, you know, and I'm not saying it because you're sitting in front of me, but you know, you've always been one of my muses. As a matter of fact, you're in my book, yes, A I Muse. Am. Yes, I you am. know, so yes, you. Um, um, no, there's not a whole lot of others. Now, why there's do you, you? Okay, I, but why do you think that is? Well, you know, as a designer, mm -hmm. for me, you know, I'm speaking for me, I'm an artist, right? So, I mean, you know, a lot of people don't, they don't consider design to be like art, like, you know, painting art, but it is, you know? Um, and as an artist, you have a muse, you have a canvas, you have, you know, whatever you, you know, whatever it is that inspires you. And um, so I need a particular, like, for me to do my first samples, and I'm when I first sketched the dresses, there was a whole lot to consider. I didn't even know what size I should make my first sample, mm -hmm. which I decided on 16, 18, mm -hmm. you know, but, um, and then when you're making, you know, that first sample, when I, I made like the first three or four dresses without having seen it on an actual body, because my dress form is not 16, 18, you know, my dress form is six. So, I don't even know what it looks like on somebody. You know, this is when I f did my plushie collection. Mm -hmm. And then a client walked in who I looked at him like, she looked like she could fit. So I asked her to try it on. She tried it on, it was perfect for me, you know. Mm -hmm. you know and so I knew that I could go, go forward with it because it, that's the way I wanted it to look, you know. So yeah. Now what, now here's a nice little word, normal. Are you normal? What is normal to you? And before you start that, let me just tell you why I don't like that word normal. Mm -hmm. My whole life I've been told I was abnormal because I was bigger than everybody. I was just different. Mm -hmm. I came here with long legs, long arms, big old feet in a village of small people. And I was never considered to be normal. So if I'm not normal, you're telling me I'm abnormal. So I, that word just, it just drives me bananas. Well, you know... No, I'm not. No, I'm not normal. No, I'm not normal. Um, I don't think there is such a thing as normal, really, because everybody's different. And and what I'm coming to find, you know, I was on the train coming over here, right? And I, I'm, the train was crowded, and I'm sitting there thinking, I'm like, everybody's got their stuff. You know, everybody's got some issues. Now, you may not, when you meet somebody, you may not see their issues up front, mm -hmm. but everybody's got a little something going on in here, a little something going on here, whether it's their heart, their spirit, their mind, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, everybody, nobody's perfect. So, what is normal? Who is normal? How do you judge normal? No, well, I'm not Well, the same normal. people that make fashion for one specific <laughs> tiny segment of the population. That's pretty much where that word probably came from. Well, you know, well, well not really. No, not, not really, true. yeah, because they want the exceptional, right, as right. in the beauty and as in, you know, I mean, those girls, the models that they're dressing, they're size four, right? Mm -hmm. That, a size four at 5'10", you know, a girl, a young girl, a maybe like a, what, 10-year-old, 6-year-old even, is a size 4. 
So imagine being 5'10 and being a four. That, like that's not, starving. yeah, that's not normal. Of course not normal. And I don't really think it's beautiful either. Okay. You know, it, it's not, you know. But the clothes look better on them that they're designing for them because the samples that they're making are size six because it's cheaper to produce the clothes in a smaller size than it would be to produce it in a larger size. I get that. However, you're making a sample size to show for people to, to potentially purchase. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, you making your sample in a six, but your size range goes, let's say goes to uh, 18. Right, right, right. The size six dress is not gonna look the same this is true. On me, this on a size true. 18. So that means I'm going to be holding on to my little wallet like <laughs> this because this, I'm a body stress and then I still got to get it altered. Yeah, this is true. So th that, that whole business model is a little crazy for me. Why would you not make a sample size that's more fitting of the majority of what people look like? Well, that is true. Now, you, but you, you know what? You also have to remember okay. that fashion was an industry. It still is an industry, but now it's so commercialized. Everybody wants to be a part of fashion. Everybody wants to be front row in fashion. And, you know, so it, it's become so polarized, so glamorized that but it, it it's still it's not still inclusive. Now. It, oh, I mean, it's it was, always been it, unrealistic. Exactly. But it's, exactly. it's really just ridiculous. Exactly. It was, but it's but it's it is what it has always been. It's not different. It was always that. You know, back in the seventies and the eighties, the fashion shows they were put on in the designers' showrooms, mm -hmm. you know, right, right there in their studio. So they didn't need a whole bunch of space. It was just the press and the buyers who were coming. The celebrities weren't even coming at that point, mm -hmm. you know. But now, the celebrities want to be there. The bloggers want to be there. The the students want to be there. The stores want to be. Everybody wants to be there. But why do you think that is now? Uh, social media has a lot to do with everything, you know. Um, yeah, so I think definitely the social media. But then also, um, like a lot of a lot of the celebrities, a lot of the celebrities are even paid to be front row at certain shows. Does that make your stock go up? If 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 say, okay, say Anna Wintour is sitting on your front row. Well, I mean, realistically, isn't that why you're doing it? Why you have all these A-listers sitting on the front row? So that up... Well, you know, for me, for, well, I, I can't speak for them. I can only speak for me. I don't really care if those A-listers are sitting front row at my show. Um, it's, it's really about the person who is going to pay the price for the dress. I'm not interested in loaning you a dress for a public appearance or loaning you a dress for, you know, whatever, and I'm, I'm not getting paid for it because there's only one of anything. There's only one sample. So after you dance, disco, partied, or done whatever it is you've done in the dress, how am I supposed to sell it? I don't really get that. Why do you have to sell it when they have the money to pay for it? Yeah. This is what I don't really... Well, you know, you know what they say, the rich get more while the weak ones fade. Yeah, I just, that, that's a little crazy to me. You Empty pockets don't ever make the grade. Are you going to throw a song lyric out? I'm, I'm about to sing. Okay, no, all right, man. <laughs> and I hope you join in because I know you're a singer. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so Douglas, let's talk about the author part of your life. Now, mm -hmm. you, you've done two books and you're working on a, threat, a, a third, mm -hmm. the, the Red Dress. Yes. In uh, 2013. Mm -hmm. And the book I was in. Amuse. Amuse. <laughs> that came out before the Red Dress? Yes, it did. That okay. was the first one. And... Now you're working on Always a Dime, yes. which is the uh, official memoir yes. of Douglas Says. Yes. And from what I understand, a lot of folks, you, you, you're just telling everybody business. In this well, I'm telling my business. I'm, I'm, I'm not telling anybody's business unless you were. Unless you happen uh, to be there yeah. in the story exactly, that I'm telling. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So, so what, what are we in for? When? How far does this go back? Does it go back from the um, beginning? Or? Well, no. It, well, the beginning for me, the book starts actually... Um, wow. You know, I started in 2006, right? So when I started to write the book, I wrote from the day that my mother passed. Okay. And actually, when you start to read the book, that's the day that it, you know, 
that the book starts at. Just a normal day, me working, you know, getting up, going to work, it's prom season, it's crazy, mm -hmm. and uh, I get a phone call. And then I take you from, from that day to um, my, my, my grandmother's history, mm -hmm. meaning, you know, my, my grandmother's children, and I give you all of my aunts and uncles, all my cousins, because I want the first half of the book to, um, to be for my nieces and nephews the history of our family tree. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm, I'm like the oldest, so, you know, I mean, I have two or three older cousins, but they don't, you know, they don't really care. So um, for me, it's important that my nieces and nephews know about my aunts and my uncles, you know, who came before, right. you know. And then it goes into, like my mother was a baby of her family, of my grandmother. Right. So when my mother had me, I'm the firstborn, um, I think my mother was like 21 when she had me. So then... And where, where were you in the, the lineup? You the I'm baby? The, I'm the firstborn. Oh, you're the oldest? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> I know. I, I understand that position. Yeah. yeah that, you know, that's a little hexagon times. Okay. You know? So, so, and then, and then my story starts. From there, my story starts. But it doesn't start like me being a little boy, me growing up. You know, it doesn't do so, that. So, now, the story of, your story begins at what point in your, in your life? Um, it pretty much begins... Uh, <laughs> I don't know what you're laughing at. It all to get inside your head and figure out what is so funny. Well, you to you. you will be inside my head once you get inside <laughs> these pages. Um, you know, it, it's very very revealing, and you know, and really and truly, I didn't I didn't want it to come out. I told my sister. I said, you know. Um, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not I told my sister, I said, you know, my book, I said, you could sell my book at my funeral. I said, <laughs> because... Oh, it's that kind of book? <laughs> it's that kind of book. I, oh, you're just I, revealing and I really, secrets from the vault. I okay. really don't want my nieces and nephews to read it, even though the first part is a family. You know, Douglas? <laughs> okay. <laughs> See, you laughing, and it's funny, because what you just said, mm -hmm. this is the whole reason that I have not gotten this far mm -hmm. in my, but it's, you, it's my, it's it's not a, I'm not even telling anybody it's a memoir, it's just, it's just a, a, a book uh -huh. that I've been writing based on my adventures right. in my life, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and and see, you're a Pisces. I already and know I'm you got some reading, stuff. I can't let my mama read this stuff. Me too. I can't, I can't let them read this. I don't want them to know the stuff about me. But <laughs> it's a it's a good story. Yes, the stories are good, and I'm I'm curious as to who else wore these shoes and went through some of this crazy. And I went through some crazy. Yeah, stuff. yeah. So, but was it hard for you to get it out? Not at all. It, 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 you know, because you lived it. You know what I mean? You're just retelling the story, you know, and you want to do it in its accuracy. So, mm -hmm. no, I'm not changing names or, uh, you know, I talk about Reggie Wells. I talk about uh, Quiet Fire. I talk about, you know, a lot of relationships that I had in my youth. Um, so, yeah, no, I'm not, not changing names. Are a lot names. of these people gone now? No, um, well, yeah, there are a lot of people gone, but then there are a lot of people still here, too. So, you know, uh, but um, it's very colorful, and I've enjoyed, I've enjoyed living it, but I enjoyed reading it when I read, when I read, when I read it back. It's going over your life. You, yeah, but, you know, and it, it just, yeah, it just makes you smile. I mean, there are numbers in there that you just wouldn't even believe, you know. Uh, <laughs> I, I, and I don't mean telephone numbers, you know. <laughs> But there, you know, it really is, and I'm just like, wow. Now, sometimes I get a little, like, you know, I'm like, I get a little disgusted at, you know, like, some of the numbers, and I'm like, this is ridiculous, you know. This is, this hey, that's your life, though. Yeah, you yeah. Did, you enjoy it. Exactly. And you hit, ooh, God bless you, you here to talk about it. A lot of folks, they make that journey. Let hello. me just say that. Hello, okay? hello, hello. So, you know, let me just, let me ask, mm -hmm. because... Your success, mm -hmm. as far as you're concerned, yeah. you're, you you are living your dreams. Mm -hmm. You're doing the thing that you love to do. Mm -hmm. You're making money, enough money for you to live off mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. without all of the hype and the fanfare and all of that. You know, people up in your face all day long. So, so I gotta ask though, mm -hmm. would a would a, a franchise like pro, like pro, a project run like mm -hmm. that's hugely popular, mm -hmm. and you will get so much. Um, 
I don't know if exposure is the word I want to use, but I you will get more be. people will, will will know who Douglas mm -hmm. says is and learn more about your brand. Why have you not? Is that something that you're not interested in? Doing? Well, you know, I I actually I went out for Project Runway more than once, so um, I went out for all of them, um, Project Runway. Um, the one that Iman and Isaac Mizrahi was on, mm -hmm. the one, the fashion star. Uh, I went out for all of them. Mm -hmm. um, I, I got closest with um, the one with Iman. Okay. Um, they called me back in like three times. Uh, they did the sewing test. They did the um, on-camera interview. They did everything. They they loved me. The, the um, uh, what, 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 what were they? The... Um, I want to say sponsors, not sponsors, but I forget what, what they called them at the time. But those guys, they loved me. You know, they loved me on camera. Da, da, da. Producers? Yeah, that's it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you know, they so loved what, me. So what do you think happened? Um, I think in the end, I wasn't willing to be uh, as much of a character as they would have liked me about. to be. Yeah, you got to be good TV. Yeah. And, and the, you, guy who, the guy who got... Right, you and that, back for, and that was their thing. They was like, well, um, you know, the, could you be more, because, yeah. you know, when we saw you yesterday, you were, you know, we loved, you know, but could you be more, and, you know, they go through your social media stuff, so they're like, oh, you know, we, we saw some pictures of you, do you, know, do you ever do drag? And I was like, well, what gay man that's a designer hasn't, you know? <laughs> So they were like, well, we, we want to know that. We Tell us about that. We want to see pictures of us. No. Yeah, see, that's it. I learned that. Because, again, my nieces and everyone said they don't know. I don't want them to know, you know. But I they mean, know already, don't they? They kind of know. <laughs> They I'm know sure, their Uncle Douglas. They I'm know. sure they do. Yeah, they know. You know, but I don't need to, you know, it's not about, it's not even really about them. It's more about their friends. You know what I mean? Um... I, I, I get it. I get it. You know, but chances you, are, if they know, their friends already know, too. Well, you know, I, I'm not... Well, call me naive, I have been all my life, but I don't really think they know like that. Like, yeah, they know. Don't look at me like that. Okay. <laughs> like, they know, look, look, they know that, but they don't know that. Okay. You know, they don't know about Omni. Oh, yeah. okay, I don't know about Omni either. Okay, we're gonna have to talk off camera. <laughs> all right, you guys hear the music, so you know we are just about out of time. So I'd like to thank my guest, Douglas Says, for sharing his industry knowledge with us today. Now, as always, before I go, I'd like to leave you with a few thoughts. I want you to, one, remember that you can't change the game until you first learn the game. Two, always surround yourself with positive people and positive things. Three, do what you love and love what you do. And lastly, be who you are, but be who you are tastefully. Always have some class about yourself. Now, don't forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest.